What's up, squeegee slingers and water-fed pole wiggling wagglers, and welcome back to another episode on the Trad and Squeaky Show. Welcome back to Squeaky Clean, Dave. How you doing, Dave? I'm good, thanks, Pete. How are you? Oh, all right. Just getting through this winter and this COVID situation. Just do, doing the best we can. As I'm sure everybody watching is probably trying to do do the same. Have you been managing through the cold, Dave? Yeah, I tend to skive off a bit more than I should do in the cold, but you know. <laughs> got to be done sometimes <laughs> well this is it this is it and you know you've got a nice fancy hot water system so you'll be okay surely no excuses no it's <laughs> not ready as we speak <laughs> fantastic well guys if this is your first time joining in with our little show um the first episode i'll leave a link at the top of the video for you it was talking about whether window cleaning was right for you, whether you should get into it, the pros and cons. Me and Dave sort of brought out the uh, the good and the bad and the ugly in window cleaning. Um, so we thought with this episode, we would go from the point of view, right, you've decided that window cleaning is for you. Um, and you're thinking about either getting a water fed pole system or you're thinking about getting traditional equipment, but you're not quite sure what to get, how to get going. So we've between me and myself and Dave had a bright idea of basically pretending that I know nothing about water fed pole and Dave knows nothing about traditional and we're going to ask each other questions and try and get to the point of uh, you know we can invest in this gear and know what we're doing and talking about with it hopefully is that right Dave <laughs> what's the idea okay no no too hard questions to be honest i think you've got the harder job because traditional explaining the the gear behind traditional is a lot easier so i think you've got the harder job to be honest well maybe there's a quite a bit of stuff when it comes to uh, water fed pole yeah absolutely absolutely so going from the point of view is i'm i'm a complete newbie to water fed pole um and i'm going to ask you some questions dave so hopefully you can help me. So hopefully you guys are watching the video. This is of help to you as well. So first question, Dave. Okay, I've I want to get into water fed pool. What's the first thing I need to do or check? First of all, you need to find out what your water's like. Uh, the reason this is is that throughout the country there's different levels of impurities in the water. So you need to buy a little meter, a little it's just a little thing. Uh, and it will tell you how impure or how pure your water is. Uh, it's called a TDS meter and it measures PPM or parts per million. So what that is, is it's the amount of dissolved solids in your water and the higher the number, the more impurity in your tap water. So to start off with, you'll need to get a TDS meter and find out what your uh, water quality is and that way you'll know what sort of filtration to use. Okay, okay. So let's go from the point of view is, uh, although my water here is actually quite soft, but we'll go from the sort of worst case scenario. Let's say I've got my TDS meter and my little device says I'm over a hundred parts per million. It's quite hard water. Let's say, um, what do I do then? What, what do I need to get? Yeah, so the higher your filter, the higher your water quality, the higher the number, the, the more uh, complicated your filter system gets, basically. Uh, when you have over 100, between 70 and 100 and over, you best off, it's more efficient to get what's called a reverse osmosis membrane as part of your filtration system and uh, a deionization bottle or a DI bottle. So it goes in through the reverse osmosis filter first, and they come in various sizes. Uh, the smaller ones you get start about 250 pound, but they literally only filter about 20 liters an hour. You can pay thousands of pounds for them, but when you're getting up to a sort of a, quite a common one is called a 40-40 RO, which it's about four inches in diameter and 40 inches long. Uh, that, and if you, you boost the water pressure with that, you can get 240 liters an hour. So you're producing a lot more pure water. So once it's gone through your DI, once it's gone through your RO, that brings you where I am, I'll get about uh, my water's 240 parts per million. Once it's gone through my RO, it brings it down to about 15. Once it's gone through that, it goes into this DI bottle, which brings it down to zero. Okay, okay. So I'm presuming then if obviously if I've got very soft water, I'll probably just get away with the DI bottle then 
Yeah, with if you've got very soft water, uh, what they tend to do is is called double DI, uh, and what that is, you have two DI bottles side by side. The water comes into the one, uh, it comes down through it which takes the bulk of the impurities out. It then goes into the second one, which takes the final part of it out. And what happens is once the first one is degraded, so it's not working, you refill that up to, uh, to so it's producing much better quality water and you move that over. So it's then going into the one with the less quality and into the better one to finish cleaning the water. There's also a thing called um, an unger hydro. Uh, which I think you've actually got, haven't you, Pete? Yes, I do. Is this the part where I pretend I know what I'm talking about now? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, yeah. So I've got an Unger Hydro. Um, where I live, my water is around about 38, 39 parts per million. So it's really soft. Um, so once you've tested your water, if it's anything like mine, a single unit Unger Hydro, you can get away with using. And it seems to last uh, quite a while. But um, I think they come in three tiers. So it's basically the one I have has one resin bag in it. And obviously tier two is two bags, tier three is three bags and it gets taller as you go up. Um, but yeah, they're, they're quite good. They're quite efficient machines. Um, and obviously being Unger as well, it's very well built. I mean, mine's been going for ages. Um, and it's very simple. Water goes in the in the bottom and out the top comes the pure water. I think it's that way around, <laughs> if I remember rightly. Something like that, in and out, as easy as that. So there you go. <laughs> If people want to learn a bit more about it, if they go over to my channel, I've actually got a, a video on there. It's called Base. I have to look down because I can't remember off my own videos. Yeah. <laughs> the Basic Guide to Water Fed Pole or WFP Filters RO versus Double DI. And I'll just go into a bit more detail on that and show you how it all fits together. Because it, when you first see it all, it can look a bit complicated, but it is really basic, actually. Perfect. And what I'll do, folks, is um, anything Dave refers to, whether it's um, actual products or his videos, I'll pop them in the description below. So anything that's mentioned during this video, if you fancy checking out another video, have a look in the description and it'll be down there for you. OK, so I'm going back into newbie mode now. I don't know anything about water fed pole. You've told me how to test my water and how to filtrate my water, which is good. But then what do I do with it? Do I do I store it? like in a garage or something or i've seen some people put it in a van How, what, what do i do with that there's two ways of doing it you can have your filtration system set up at home mm -hmm. this because i've got no off-road parking i can't literally run hoses across a footpath to be filtering it in the van so i filter my water at home into a big it's called an ibc tank mm -hmm. um so it filters into that and then at the beginning of the day or the start at the end of the day what i'll do is i'll pump my pure water into a holding tank in the van uh the other way of doing it sometimes you'll have your filters actually set up in the van so it filters it straight into the tank in your van uh and that's the you know there's the two ways main ways of doing it okay okay no bother well i've actually i'm gonna pretend i've just got a little van right so i'm gonna probably get the system put in my van that probably be more convenient for me um, so what's the next things I need to get? Apparently I need something like, well, obviously a way to pump it and power it and stuff like that. But could you, could you walk me through what I need to do to get the water actually from my van to my jobs? Of course. Yeah. It's it, again, it looks really complicated, but you, you can break it down to five basic elements. You've got your tank, you've got, uh, your pump and controller, and they actually pump the water out and the controller notices when you disconnect the pump so it's not just pumping against a solid end uh it was, turns it on and off and it also increases your flow rate so that's number two number three is your hose and reel uh all that is is basically a big hose reel tend to go for 100 meters of hose personally i use six millimeters i know some people use eight millimeter hose but i use six uh there's the leisure battery now this is what they call a deep cycle battery it releases power slowly. A car battery is designed to give a big jolt of energy and then release, then do nothing really until the next time it's used to start it. A leisure battery is designed to give a slow, steady release throughout the day. So they come in different sizes. Um, probably the smallest one that you'd really want if you're sit, setting up a system in your van is 75, 80 amp hours. That's a good small one to start with. Personally, I'd go for 110 amp hours and 
there's probably only about 15, 20 quid in the difference between the two. So the bigger, the, the more amp hours, the amp hours is the amount of power it stores. So the bigger you've got, the less time you'll go between charging your battery. And then the fifth one is your pole and brush. Now, there's no end of poles and brushes and, um, but, and there's a no end of range of prices as well. But yeah. if you look at sort of a, a there's one called um, a CLX22, which is what they call a composite pole from a company called Gardner. Mm -hmm. They started about 160 pound plus VAT. That's a 22 foot pole. It comes with a brush. It comes with uh, all the hoses you need and the connectors you need. So that's a, a composite one is a cheap starting place. The problem with composite, they're quite bendy. Uh, they're quite heavy in comparison to others. So in my opinion, you're better off saving a little bit longer and getting a full carbon one. So there's, there's SLX from the same company or there's Phantom from Window Cleaning Warehouse or what I personally use is over eight. Uh, they range between 240 and 320 pounds for the same length of pole but that is a full carbon pole so it's a lot lighter and it's a lot stiffer and they all come with brushes and that and and uh, hose with it so that's what you need to actually clean the windows the pole so you can reach up to the high windows and the brush to give the glass a scrub with perfect perfect well it kind of sounds like i, I kind of got my head around all of that um, I did have a question that I've seen some guys using, I think it's like a backpack. Um, now, my question is that how does a backpack work and does it clean the water for me? Uh, how, do, how do I sort of figure out how that works? Yeah, that's a really good question. Uh, the backpack, you've got your delivery system in there, which is the second part I went over. It hasn't got the filters. So you'll still need to either filter your water. There is another option. You can actually buy your water. Uh, there's companies that sell the water. Um, I was looking today and I can't remember off the top of my head, I, it, but it's a lot cheaper if you can filter your own. If you haven't got the means or you, you know, you, you need to start up straight away and you can't afford to buy the filters, then it's worth buying it. But if you're using a lot of water, you're probably better off uh, filtering it. But the backpack itself, it's, it's those five elements, well, four of the elements all enclosed. You've got your tank, You've got your pump and controller, you've got your battery, and you've got your hose, you've got a short length of hose with it. So, and what you do, you'll carry that around rather than have it mounted in your van, or you can have it on like a little sack truck. A lot of people do that. So you've got quite a cheap outlay there for those first five, those first five parts of the delivery system. You still need to buy your pole and brush, uh, but a backpack, you're looking, 110, 100, 120 pound plus VAT for a backpack. So it's a lot cheaper to start off with uh, if you want to go down the backpack road. The, the other thing you'll need to get if you are using the backpack is some 25 litre water containers because you won't have enough water for the day in it, just a backpack. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the downside about it is a lot of people, I mean, there's nothing wrong with using the backpack. A lot of people do in their car, but then you're lifting 25 litre containers to fill it up. 25 litres weighs 25 kilograms. One litre of water is uh, one kilogram. And that's the other thing you need to look out for when you bought with your little van. Make sure when you get your van, you check your payload. So you're not carrying too much weight. It's very, very easy to carry a lot of weight in a little van and be over the the uh, the legal limit for your van and you'll, oh. you'll get a big fine for it. Yeah, let's try and avoid that. <laughs> I was, I was actually going to ask you, um, if I'm a one-man band, how much water per day do you think I'm going to go through? How, how, how big a tank do I need, roughly? Again, this will depend on your van. Um, I've personally got a 650-litre tank in my van, but I've got it set up so I can use it with two people. Okay. When, I'm, when I'm using it on my own, I tend to use probably 350 litres, 300 between 300 and 400 litres a day, mm -hmm. depending on the work you've got. If you've got a lot of new work and you're doing it for the first time and they're very dirty, you'll use a lot more water and you'll have to rinse a lot more. So probably between three and 400 litres, you can use less people. I know people with backpacks, they use the backpack for doing upstairs and then they do the downstairs with traditional, so they're saving water. But uh, 
Yeah, and of course, if you're using your car and a backpack, you can carry a lot less water because you haven't got the weight capacity in a car. Okay, okay. And is there, um, have you got any tips for how I can potentially save water during the day? There's, inside the pole, there's a little gadget you can get called a univalve. And what that is, it's basically, it's about the size of my finger and it's like a little tap. You pull it and it turns the water off, pull it again, it turns the water back on. So you can actually stop your hose between every window if you want to. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one way of doing it. The other thing that I found, and it, it sounds a bit backwards really, is turn your flow up. Uh, I've actually found the higher the flow, because you get the glass clean a lot quicker, you do use more water, but the reason you use more water is because you do a lot more work. So I, I think I'd probably use maybe 10% more water but I'll probably do 25% more work. So you're earning more money, even though, you know, you're turning the flow up, you think I'm going to use it all quickly. You don't because you spend a lot less time rinsing the glass down. Okay, okay. No, that, that sounds all good. And um, just, just off thinking as well, when I go to get my brush, um, there's so many brushes to, to choose from. I'm kind of a bit overwhelmed what style to go for. Um, if I'm doing sort of normal, say day-to-day -day residential or commercial jobs, um, what would you say is a good all-rounder type of brush? What's it made from um, and the design to, to go for, a good all-rounder? Yeah, there's there's no end of brushes and it's quite a personal thing really. You know, it's, it, we're all different in the styles we use and what we, what we use. Mm. Me personally, I think a double trim brush, which is um, on the outside of, say that's, say that's the brush, on the outside around the edge you've got long bristles and then you've got shorter bristles which tend to be a bit stiffer on the inside you can also get them with um, a boar's hair bristle on the inside those are quite good for scrubbing the glass uh, and when you press on the longer bristles sort of splay out okay. so they give the glass a good uh, a good scrub uh, but uh, unfortunately it's there's no i don't think there's one brush suits everybody Mm. It's quite a personal thing, uh, yeah, and depending on whether you're using cold water or hot water again, because I use hot water, you need a much stiffer brush if you're using hot water yeah. because it, it sort of softens the, the bristles up and it will just wrecks the brush. Ah, makes sense, yeah. Okay, okay, no, that sounds good, yeah. Okay then, Dave, well, I think I've kind of got a handle on everything water-fed pole. I'm kind of ready to, to rock and roll. Um, so that's really, really good. Um, is there any videos that you have that could help me out? Just a final, just to get my head around everything or be helpful for me as I'm going yeah. on my water-fed pole journey? I've got a video uh, which covers this, the delivery part of the system, as we call it. Okay. Uh, it's called the step-by-step -step guide to a WFP setup. Mm. And that goes through how you set, you go through from your tank, your pump and controller, it goes very briefly through the wiring and where the hoses connect cool. uh, and then it shows you the the pole or hose reel or whatever That's so nice. yeah it, it's uh, quite a quite a basic little video but it, it does cover it all quite well fantastic well, that sounds great and hopefully you guys that are getting into water fed pole hopefully that covers everything that you need to know if there is anything at all that we haven't covered as i've pretended to not know what i'm talking about which is probably closer to the truth maybe <laughs> i don't know um but yeah hopefully that's helped you out folks and like i say the links are going to be down below in the description to some other helpful videos about water fed pole and if you want to know anything water fed pole honestly check out squeaky clean dave's channel here on youtube the link will be down there as well so it covers pretty much everything haven't you dave about water fed pole i don't think you've really left anything out so should be all right should be good to go <laughs> anybody's got any questions they can always dm me through instagram it's uh, squeaky clean dave one so nice. that's, that's probably the the format that i prefer to use really fantastic well thank you very much dave i don't feel so much of a newbie anymore maybe feel a bit more confident with uh, going forward so that's good Right, so it's my, uh, my time to be the newbie now, uh, because I'm thinking about getting into window cleaning. I mm. don't think I can afford the setup for water-fed pole, but I think I, I fancy the look of trad. Can, what do I need to get? What is, what's the first thing I'll really need to get, Pete? 
Yeah, well, it's well, traditional. One of the upsides to traditional is it is a wee bit cheaper to get all your bits and pieces together. Um, and a lot of it you can actually pick up from your sort of local stores as well. So um, first off, what we are going to need is a way to get to those windows. So you're going to probably need a set of ladders. Um, personally, I have two sets of ladders that I use. One is for sort of ground and lower work and one is for up on the uh, first floor. It's about 20 odd feet or so that it can get up to. So you need probably two ladders if you can, but if you can't, then maybe just go for the bigger one to start with. Um, and then for your lower stuff, you can maybe invest in a little pole, traditional pole or something like that. But we'll come on to that in a minute. But yeah, first thing I would get is a set of ladders. So that get, gives you access to the windows. And obviously you'll need a way to transport them around, whether that's inside of a vehicle or maybe a lot of people put them on uh, roof bars on their car or their van. Um, or you could go really old school and put it in a little trolley on your bicycle. I've seen some some people doing that, which looks really quite cool. Um, but yeah, a set of ladders to get you going up to those up to those windows. I used to work in the building trade, and I've got this great big set of triple ladders. I oh, yeah. to get up to you know top of the Empire State buildings. Nice. That's what I <laughs> wow. Well, I mean. I'm not going to tell you exactly what you have to do, but personally, what I would say is if you're going to go up ladders on your own, if you're a one man band, personally, as a rule of thumb, I stick to a two section ladder. So it takes me up to about 20 odd feet or so roughly. Um, if I'm going up any higher or a bigger ladder, I normally will get somebody to spot the ladder and hold the ladder for me. Um, just for that extra peace of mind, obviously, you're going up that bit more. It's better to get somebody to to hold that ladder for you. Um, but if you, if you can go for a two a two stage one, maybe up to about twenty four rungs, something like that. I'll leave links in the description below um, for people to see the two ladders that I use, which is from a company called Ramsey Ladders, based in Scotland. Um, so I'll put them in the description below, so they're nice and easy for you to have a look at and get an idea of how much they they cost as well. well what what are those uh, those funny ladders with the point on the top? Ah, the A-frame ladders. Yes, so they are really good, designed for window cleaning. Um, so they have a protective rubber cap on the top, so you can practically lean them against anything, everything, apart from the glass. Don't put them on the glass, wherever you do. Um, so framework, brickwork, you can use them obviously inside and put them on, on surfaces as well. It's a nice, good rubber cap, and it's got grooves in the cap as well, so it kind of wraps around the edges of the corners of buildings or the edges of you know, the frames of the windows and things like that. And it kind of holds you against that point. Um, so no, they're really good, especially the ones I love is the nine rung Ramsey A-frame. It's really good for your low level work, whether it's like shop fronts you're doing or little bungalows, anything low level. It's a fantastic little ladder and it's very, very light as well. It's aluminium. I'll leave that in the description below, the nine rung Ramsey, absolutely fantastic. But yeah, so that's what an A-frame is. It just comes to a point and the bottom of the ladder, the legs are a bit wider than your trade ladders. So you get a bit more stability at the bottom as well, a bit wider at the bottom. So they're very good, very well-made ladders and very popular with traditional window cleaners. So it's, it's a good shout um, to have one of them if you can. How do I hold them on the top of my vehicle? Yeah, so you've got a couple of options. Um, you've got the old sort of wing styled uh, clamps that you basically pull the bottom of it, spin the clamp around and it just clamps the whole ladder to the roof rack. It's very, very simple and straightforward. Little hook goes under your roof bars and then you just spin the handle around until it's tight. That's the old school option. The newer ones are called Rhino Safe Clamps. So it's in the theory, it's the same kind of idea. Little hook goes under the roof bar. Um, and you pull a little lever and it just clamps the whole ladder to your roof rack. So um, yeah, both are good. Um, the Rhino safe clamps actually come with an inbuilt locking mechanism as well. So, you know, you've got a peace of mind, you can actually leave your ladders on the, your vehicle overnight and just lock it. Um, and you don't have to have actual padlocks and stuff, which you would need for the original first um, clamp that I was describing. I'll leave a, a link in the description to both clamps so you can get a look at both of them, the two different styles um, and also the two different prices as well. Because the Rhino one, although it's quicker and easier to use and has that inbuilt locking mechanism, I think it's about twice the price. So it depends on your budget as well, which one's going to be more applicable for you. What, what about bungee cords? Would that, are they any good? 
the old stretchy bungee cords. Yeah, I, personally, I wouldn't use them. No, <laughs> I know. Um, in days gone by, old school. Um, yeah, I think even my my dad, who's been window cleaning for nearly about 36, 37 years, um, I think back in the day they used to use things like that, bungee cords or ropes. Um, but I'm I'm thankful to say now they do use proper clamps. So, <laughs> so I would always highly recommend, especially if you don't want to be pulled over by the police uh, um, to use proper clamps. So safety first. Well, I've got my ladders and they're on top of my van. Nice. What do I need next? Right. Clamps next. very well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so, I mean, the next bits and pieces, um, like I say, you can either pick these up from your local sort of hardware DIY type stores. Usually they've got bits, the majority of the bits and pieces, or you can go to actual window cleaning suppliers to get this stuff. Um, it depends on your budget. And there's also obviously eBay and Amazon, but what I'll do is I'll bring it up on screen as we're talking about it with each item I'm talking about. First thing you'll need is really a way to wash those windows. So you'll need what's called an applicator. They come in different sizes. And basically what it consists of is a plastic handle with a microfiber sort of fluffy sleeve that goes over the top of it. And that's what actually cleans your window. So you dunk that in your cleaning solution, you rub the window with it, and, and that basically obviously agitates the, all the dirt on the window for you. Um, so you've got your way to wash the window there. Um, and the next thing really you need to do is get that solution off the window. Um, so the next thing you'll need in conjunction with that is a squeegee. Um, probably most people have probably seen one in a store, I would imagine, but I'll bring one up on screen now for you anyway, just uh, uh, one from a local supplier. Um, so this is an Unger squeegee. This is a very commonly used one that you can get from hardware stores as well. But it's a good starter squeegee, around about 14 inch squeegee is a good size to kind of start with. Same with your applicator, around about 14 inches is a good all round kind of size to get you, get you started. So you've got a way to wash the windows and a way to squeegee it off. So there you go. Hopefully that helps. <laughs> you hold your water in then if you've got, you've got your squeegee in your applicator. Yep. What do you do with those? Where, you know, where do you keep them? Cool. Yeah. So, I mean, some, there's two different options, really. Some people, what they do is they'll have just a, basically a large sort of rectangular bucket. Some people actually like a, a round bucket and they'll just put their tools in there and they carry it around in a bucket. I've seen that's quite popular. Um, the other option is what's called a bucket on a belt or a BOAB, which it's known for short. And that's basically just a small bucket, it's rectangular in shape that clicks onto your belt. So you have a separate belt. It's not the one that holds up your trousers normally. Um, have a separate belt around your waist and this bucket on a belt clicks onto that with a little loop. And usually a lot of these ones now come with a quick release as well. So you can take this bucket on and off when you need. Um, but buckets, especially nowadays, they're all coming in different shapes and sizes, but generally speaking, they hold your washer, which is the first thing we spoke about. And they'll normally hold at least one squeegee. Um, there are others that can hold two. So I personally, I would get one that can hold two squeegees. So it gives you two different sizes you could have. Um, you could have a bigger squeegee and a smaller one, something like that. So, uh, so bucket on a belt, that's how you hold your, your applicator and your squeegee on your hip. That's my top tip is I, I would go for that personally. Is there a, I think you've got a video on why you can buy it all together, haven't you? Yeah, I mean, if there's, there's starter kits that you can get. So if you've maybe, I would say at least have around about maybe 150 pounds to 200 pounds roughly um, set aside if you want a starter kit. Now, starter kits can go from very, very basic to, you know, one washer, one squeegee, you know, one traditional belt kind of thing, all the way up to sort of, you know, three, 400 pounds for a lot more tools. Um, so I'll leave a link in the description below to a couple of videos I've done on starter kits and see if perhaps they might be of use. Um, but starter kits are really good because it means it's a one-time purchase and you know that you've basically got everything you need to get going, that as soon as it arrives, get the stuff in your vehicle and, and get going. So now, now I've got my, uh, my bucket and my squeegees and applicators, yep. is there anything else I need? Yes. So the next thing you probably be best getting, which again, you can either get from suppliers or you can even get it from your local supermarkets is, is cloths. You'll need a way to wipe frames, doors, sills. Um, so personally, I would recommend having two different types of cloths. Um, keep one style of cloth. So your normal basic microfiber cloth um, for frames and sills and doors. 
and then have a separate cloth for glass. Now, microfiber cloths for glass are a little bit different from your typical microfiber cloth you get in a shop. So the difference being is that a normal microfiber cloth that you pick up in your sort of Tesco's, Asda or wherever, normally it's quite a fluffy kind of cloth, which is perfectly fine for frames and doors and that kind of thing. But for glass, you want something that's not going to leave any little bits of fluff or anything behind on the glass. So you actually get smooth microfiber cloths for glass. That's what they're, they're designed for. So what I'll do is I'll leave a link in the description below to the two styles of cloth so you can see them as well and get an idea of, of those. But you'll probably need, well, probably quite a lot. It depends on how many jobs you have. But to give you an idea, I personally go through maybe about a dozen of the sort of fluffy, normal microfiber cloths a day when I'm cleaning the frames and sills and doors. Um, when it comes to microfiber cloths, one for the glass, um, probably maybe one or two of them a day max, usually, depending on how much solution you're leaving behind on the glass as well. <laughs> and maybe at the beginning, you might maybe need a few more. But uh, so yeah, hopefully that, that gives you a bit of an idea how many you might need and just multiply that by how many days a week that you're working. So when you when you got to the end of the week and you got all your cloth, your dirty cloth, yeah. what do you do? Just stick them in the washing machine with washing up like washing up powder and uh, fabric conditioner. Ah yes. Uh, well, first thing, yeah, don't do that. <laughs> um, yeah. So normally they'll have instructions. Hopefully, usually come with it. Um, for me, all I do is I put it on a on a hot wash. So put it in the washing machine and um, put in some antibacterial into the tray, and that's it. And then obviously there'll still be cleaning product in the cloths themselves anyway from when you've been cleaning the window. So that'll actually help clean them anyway. But just make sure it's on a good a good high heat as well. Um, and most cloths, I think they can take up to about five, six hundred washers before you start sort of noticing they're getting a bit rough. <laughs> so um, but yeah, just a nice, nice hot heat in the washing machine and antibacterial and don't wash them with anything else. Just um, you know, put your cloths on separately or have a separate washing machine for it if you can. Um, and, and don't wash them with your wife's clothes, do whatever you do. <laughs> don't do that. So if, if I get to a job and it's it's yeah. covered in um, in paint, say, what do I do about that? OK, yeah. So, um, yeah, it depends if that's obviously you're going to include sort of removal of paint in, in your business. Some people don't. Some people will just wash the window with their applicator, squeegee it down and whatever's left on the glass, they just leave it. Um, but if you want to get into that kind of thing, um, yeah, you can get what's called a window cleaner's razor. And again, I'll leave a link to one of them in the description as well. Um, my personal preference, it's there's one called an Unger Ninja. Um, and I think there's two sizes, you get a four inch and a six inch. Personally, I go for the bigger one just because you can cover that glass a bit quicker. Uh, but the razor is really good. Um, as long as you wet the window first, always scrape in one direction and make sure the glass is always wet when you scrape, never scrape dry glass. Um, then you'll be able to remove things like paint or ingrained bird's mess as well. Um, that comes off nice and easy. You just have to watch the kinds of windows you use it on. Don't use it on any windows that have a film or a tint, um, anything like that. As long as it's a normal bog standard window, they'll be fine to use your, your razor. But that's what you would use to get paint off anyway. Um, and that hopefully helps you. So now I've got all my equipment. Yep. How to learn to use it. Right, learn to use it. So um, you can obviously go on to like, like what you're doing now onto YouTube. I've got a few videos um, that hopefully will, will help you. I'll put them in the description as well. But YouTube is probably one of your best places to learn if you can't go and get a job with a company and learn it from them. Uh, I was quite fortunate. I went and worked for two companies that I got trained up how to do uh, traditional and water fed, um, but you might not be in a position to do that. So if you are learning from scratch and what you, there's no one around to teach you, then probably somewhere like YouTube is going to help you. Um, I do believe there's some window cleaning companies that offer training courses, but perhaps you might be on a budget. So, you know, best way, cheapest way is just to go onto YouTube and watch as many as you can and get an all round picture of, well, that looks seems to work quite well or that seems to work quite well. Um, and that's a good way to, to learn. That's how I've actually improved myself is by watching other people and thinking, well, you know, I quite like how they do that. That'll make my method better. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, Paramount, check out the Tradman channel. You'll learn everything on there. So <laughs> I think whether you're using Trad or whether you're using Waterfed Pole, practice. Offer, yes. You know, do your own windows, do your parents, do your brothers and sisters, do your mates. Yeah. Offer oh. everybody a free clean to start with, just to, not too many free cleans. No. <laughs> <laughs> but just, just go around and practice, practice, mm. practice. And that's that's what it, it all comes down to, isn't it, to Absolutely. start with? Absolutely. I mean, if you've got, you know, pretty decent windows at home that you can access, just practice them. You know, maybe you've got a job at the moment that's not window cleaning. And, um, you know, even if you come home in the evening and just practice for half an hour or something, you know, um, rather than sitting in front of the telly and just watching rubbish, you can, you know, go and practice a bit of window cleaning and your wife will be happy with you too, or your other half. <laughs> will be happy, they've got nice clean windows. So make sure you do them all. Because what I did when I was practicing was just keep practicing on one window. Um, so that window was always the clean one and the rest didn't get done. So if you're going to do a free clean for your other half, make sure you do them all. <laughs> and it's the same with water fed. Just practice, get used yeah. to your equipment. Get used to the weight of it, get used to extending your poles, how to hold it, how to stand. Yeah. And just practice, just get used to using it. You know, get used to not swinging around with it, sticking out behind you and rubbing up the side of somebody's car and things like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just practice and, and get used to your equipment, I think, is a good tip. Aye. Well, this is it, this is it. And well, actually, just you brought back to my memory there, maybe one other thing that might be a good idea for a new traditional window cleaner to get is, is a pole um because sometimes you cannot get a ladder to the windows sometimes there's obstructions in the way so i would recommend having a good if you can a good quality traditional pole um, but again if you're on a budget i would say maybe go for aluminium they're fairly cheap but if you do have a bit of uh, a bit of cheddar to spend um then there i'll leave a link in the description below to a really good traditional window cleaning pole um that it can do anything and everything so um, yeah, just as you reminded me there, Dave. Thank you. That's one other thing that they'll need. Right then. So I think that's about it. We've covered Trad, what you need, and the World Fed poll. Yep. As Pete said, he's going to put links to all the different videos we've got in the description below. If you have got any comments or any questions, drop them in the comments box. And if we find anything interesting in there, we'll uh, probably feature it on the next episode that we do and give you a bit of a shout out there. Um, if there's anything that you want us to cover, just let us know. Let us uh, know what you'd be interested in us seeing and having a chat about, and uh, we'll see you soon. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Make sure you fa follow the Tradman window cleaning channel on YouTube. There'll be a link on that. And we'll see you soon. Bye for now. Take care, folks. Bye for now. <laughs>